ever try differentiating this sort of a question? Well, let's get our hands on it. Hi everyone, welcome to Mathematically Inclined. So on the YouTube search bar, you can type for Neha Agarwal Maths. Do not worry much about the spellings. It would lead you to my channel. You could click on that. So once you open the channel, you would see all the videos. You could always subscribe. You also see the playlist over here. Now these are chapter wise playlists. For example, you want to watch differentiation. You can click on that. This would open the entire playlist for you. Now you can click on the video of your choice. Were you looking to learn some? Well then. And get started with the video. Now let's begin with differentiation of determinants. If we are given the function in terms of a determinant, how do we get dy by dx? It's a simple rule. Either try differentiating row wise. That means differentiating one row at a time and keeping the other two as they were or differentiate it column wise, differentiating one column at a time and retaining the other two as it is. So it is very similar to your product rule. Let's try and apply it. So taking your y, now if I have to get my derivative, this means so we see the derivative of the first row. That means we would differentiate this row wise. So differentiating the first row and keeping the remaining two as they were. Next time keeping the first and third as they were. And differentiating the second one. Now L, M, N, A, B, C, they're all constants. So this becomes 0. Plus likewise this time retaining the first two rows and differentiating only the third one. As you can clearly see, determinant 2 and determinant 3 have a row containing all zeros. So even if you try expanding, these two determinants would just vanish. And you are left with only the first one, which happens to be our answer. Wasn't that simple? Now if you are given a determinant and you have to just find its derivative, you have two choices. Either you differentiate row wise or column wise as illustrated in the first example or you may even expand the determinant and whatever is the final value you can differentiate that. Now obviously this determinant seems to be quite complicated so it's a wise idea to differentiate it either row or column wise. Let's begin differentiating this row wise so you know you're going to get three determinants. For the first one, we differentiate only the first row. So this gives us 1, 0, 0. And we retain the second and third rows as they were. Similarly, for the second determinant, we differentiate the second row, which would be 0, 1, 0. And the first and third rows are retained as they were. Repeating the process with the third determinant, derivative of the third row gives us 0, 0, 1 and first and second rows are as it is. Now let's try expanding each of the determinant. Now how to expand a 3 cross 3 determinant for that you can check out the description box for the video on the same. I would also link the same video at the end of this one. So, expanding using row 1 here, you get x plus b square into x plus c square minus b square c square. This time, using the expansion with respect to row 2, we get x plus a square into x plus c square minus a square c square. And the last one, we expand with respect to row 3 to get x plus a square 
into x plus b square minus a square b square. On opening these brackets and expanding the rest, you see a lot of things getting cancelled here. Clubbing these x squares, we get 3x square and next you see you have x c square, x c square twice. Likewise, your x a square, x a square twice. So if you take two x common, we'll be left with a square plus b square plus c square. So we would be left with 3x square plus twice of x, a square plus b square plus c square, which is the required answer. Third question looks huge and very complicated, but it actually isn't. You are given three sorts of polynomials. That means basically we would be dealing with f1x, f2x, f3x and likewise for hx and gx. Now if they are given to be polynomial functions, this condition holds a lot of relevance. And we are given the function as a determinant. Then we need to figure out what is f dash x at x equal to a. So let's go stepwise once again. Suppose once again we choose to differentiate this fx row wise. So following our regular procedure for f dash x, you differentiate the first row, second row and third row in each of the determinants, retaining the other ones as they were. This is what you get. Now we have to find f dash of x at x equal to a, which means f dash at a so once we replace our x with a, something really magical happens here. Which is, remember we highlighted this condition which is true for all r equal to 1, 2 and 3. So here if you see, your g1a would be the same as h1a, g2a would be the same as h2a. Likewise, g3a is the same as h3a which makes these two rows the same. Similarly, for the next determinant, you would get your first and third rows to be the same. And likewise, for the third determinant, your first and second rows happen to be the same. Now, if you recollect the very famous result of determinants, which says if any two rows or any two columns in a determinant are identical, then value of the determinant becomes zero. Applying the same logic to each of these, your final answer is just zero. Here is another interesting question. If you are given fx, gx and hx are quadratic polynomials, then we need to prove that phi x is a constant polynomial. Now, how is it related to derivatives? Please note, if I want to show phi x is a constant, then it is sufficient to show that phi dash x would give us a zero because as you know, derivative of a constant is always zero. So let fx be a polynomial, say ax squared plus bx plus c. Similarly, gx be dx squared plus ex plus f. And let hx be say ix square plus jx plus k. So I have taken these three to be quadratic polynomials. So on talking about our main function when we differentiate, we differentiate only the first row in the first determinant, the second row in the second determinant and the third row in the third determinant. Please note f dash x stands for first derivative f double dash x stands for second derivative and f triple dash x would stand for third derivative and so on. Now let's zoom into each of the determinants one by one. When you look at the very first one, you find row 1 and row 2 as identical. Hence the determinant would be 0. Similarly, for the second one, you get row 2 and row 3 to be identical, which again gives us a 0. Going by this logic, the first two determinants simply become zero. Now let's figure out what we get for the third one. Here on basis of our assumption, let's find out the first, second and third derivative for each of the functions. So f dash x gives us 
2ax plus b. Moving on to the second derivative, we get f double dash x to be simply 2a and further f triple dash x would only give us a 0 since 2a is a constant. Similarly, when you check out for gx and hx, you would again be able to say that g triple dash x and h triple dash x are 0. If I substitute the value only for f triple dash x, g triple dash x and h triple dash x are 0, 0, 0, the determinant is bound to give us a 0. So, if phi dash x is equal to 0, then phi x is a constant polynomial. If you found this video useful, then please give it a big thumbs up and share your feedback. Do not forget to subscribe to the channel for many more math videos. I will see you the next time. Until then, bye-bye.